I extremely worry, especially when someone says don't worry about it. That is the number one cause of worrying is that don't worry about is it. is what Lee Harvey no, Oswald no, said No, the to number one cause of worrying is getting a text, hey, we need to talk. Oh, 100%. And then you send you back immediately, like, I'm free now. Or something like, right? no, no, it can wait till later. And the, then they don't say anything the for the next three hours. That's, that's fair. That is is dog semen. Okay, hello what? and welcome to Previously oh, On, a show seconds. by Damage Control Podcasting, <sighs> a professionally unprofessional take at pitch meetings where we take a convention, idea, or genre of filmmaking and attempt to sell our idea to the head of a studio. Basically, we stole the idea from, from pitch me, sort of. That's super convenient. Previously On, Previously On. Co- Cody Zemeckisberg, head of Amblin Brothers Flix Plus, was Zemeckis looking for an orage superhero IP. They wanted a hero with odd, strange powers. They bought the rights to Synstodian. I I believe Co- that was a bad, Cody, bad move on that Cody, company's part. Cody, how is production? Any updates? Uh, we've actually had some minor setbacks. The I actor we got to do it. Says he won't do it because he doesn't not familiar with the source material. Bushim, we got Bushimi. Yeah, he was out until he was in until he figured out we haven't even made a comic of it yet. Who would play God in the Sinstodian? Who would be the uh, Morgan Freeman? Well, no, 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 no. What's the exact opposite, polar opposite of Morgan Freeman? Let's Steve Bushimi, and he did play God once uh, in the Miracle Workers. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was like a the whole. In, I guess each season it's like a different little. Conan little O'Brien. Story. Oh no! What about Samuel Jackson? Oh so could, yeah. So so he could be like, yeah, Noah cut out all the motherfuckers out of the commandments. <laughs> <laughs> On the seventh motherfucking day, I rested. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of all these motherfucking humans on my motherfucking planet. <laughs> all right. Okay. I said waste the motherfucker. All right. Two thousand. We should start this episode over again. We might need yeah. to. No, we got it. We're good. <laughs> Two. Two thousand one: A Space Odyssey, Interstellar, The Martian, Galaxy <clears> Quest. <throat> what do these films have in common? Space, Alien. potatoes. Hard-hitting, realistic, and scientifically accurate. Well, Christopher Cronenfinch is wanting to make the modern sci-fi flick. He has a concept. Humans have been broadcasting signals into space on purpose and accidentally. AM, FM, and TV signals. What if an alien race found them? What effects would it have on their culture and evolution? Pitch. Wait a minute. What was my director? Christopher Cronenfinch, your ideas. This is Dan, Dan, Daniel goes first. Sorry, I just got a text from Tyler. <laughs> what, what is it? <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> Later. Later. Okay. Who's going first? Uh, nose goes. Christopher Cronin Finch. No one can see, oh. but I had my finger against my nose first. So. Yes, the great physical comedy <laughs> exactly. that you expect from this podcast. <laughs> you said you had a great idea, and you hope no one took it. I did, and then your opening kind of shot my idea out. It did? Yes, because your idea was originally the effects of the electromagnetic bubble from radios, but now it has to be a sci-fi thing. No, I don't. It was oh, okay, no, good. So mine is going to be a... Kind of a dramatic thriller type of movie. Okay. And wait, wait. In the guise of what? What do you mean in the guise of what? In the guise of a dramatic. I've never. I'm a head of a studio. I, I don't know anything. So tell me, like what? <laughs> I'm the head of a studio. I don't know anything. <laughs> Accurate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's a best boy do? <laughs> He's the boy of the best. <laughs> Is it the same thing that the grip does? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I get it. I get it. I don't. Right. Cody, do you get it? I don't get it. <laughs> I okay, do so so it's gonna be like disaster film esque, right? Well, you just said it was a mystery so, thriller. No, I said dramatic thriller. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's gonna be kind of like dramatic thriller disaster film, right? Okay. Um, and it's going to start with the scariest phrase ever produced in in movies. The last man on earth. Heard a knock at the door? No. Inspired I have all this time to tr- jerk off, but my glasses fell off. <laughs> no. Oh. You just it, gotta have a good. Inspired by true events. 
That is uh, kind of fucking terrifying. Okay. All right. Okay. I like that. All right. All right. Okay. So now, now it's important to note there's a difference between based on actual events, inspired by true events, oh, and I'm good. I'm good the studio. Right? I know legal loopholes. I'm okay. good the studio. So we're gonna start off as a period film, uh, late oh, '80s, early '90s, and it's going to s- start with you know uh, average everyday businessman. And he's saying goodbye to his wife and his kids and going to an airport, takes off from an airport and we follow him and and we're getting really invested in on him and he's talking with people and he's going to be a really kind of nice guy. So we're going to run into some, some kind of everyday problems that he's going to kind of overcome in a nice guy kind of way. Like there's a couple that gets on the plane and their tickets aren't set together. So he moves. So they can sit together, and he takes a, a more inconvenient place. We're allowing the audience to fall in love with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's a nice guy. Okay, you know this isn't is some good-looking guy. He could be. So are we are we talking <clears throat> like what are we talking like the newest YouTube star? Or are we talking like uh, the actor wise? Oh, talking? actor wise, uh, you know someone who is famous enough to sell a movie. Mark Ruffalo. Sure, we'll do Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Okay, but, yeah. but but not no someone's gonna like break the bank. Like not, we don't even have Tom yeah, Cruise uh, well, we here. We don't have know? we don't have Marvel money, so Mar- Ruffalo's out. Right. So Mar- Ruffalo would do an independent. No, he we, has done a couple. Independent. We don't have the money for him. I mean, I'll, I'll make a call. I got this. Yeah, anyway. we'll say well first we'll we'll hire Ed Norton and then he'll drop no. out and then we'll get we got Vincent Ventresca from Sci Fi's and okay Man. all right deal he's got good hair good hair right. <laughs> yeah, he he's got great hair <laughs> anyway so after he runs into some of these kind of everyday airplane problems okay um the the captain comes on and says hey run into some turbulence uh, everyone fasten your seat and then the radio goes dead so everyone's like okay you yeah, must have cut off the intercom a little bit early we're gonna Buckle our seat belts. But and he said fasten the seats. Yeah. And the, yeah, so and then he's gonna everyone's gonna fasten their seatbelt, everyone's gonna be like, okay, and the stewardesses are gonna come by, or flight attendants, what's the proper term? I don't know, flight attendants. Uh are gonna come by and be like, Yeah, everything's okay, can I get you a drink? Just everyone Stewardess. calm down, we'll come back to you. And then everything goes haywire. Uh sh- the the plane is shaking, plane is 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 diving, and eventually the plane crashes. Everyone on board is killed, including the guy we just spent probably twenty minutes falling in love with. Aww. Okay. I don't know if Vincent Ventresca <clears throat> will do a movie where he dies right off. Well, I didn't want him. Oh. Okay. I want Ruffalo. So he changed the script just to spite us. I yeah. Don't, I don't know if Ruffalo. Would. Anyway, go All ahead. All right. So everyone's dead on the plane. Everyone's dead on the plane. Right. So now we're going to meet our main character, and our main character is one of the tower operators in an airport, and. He is like flight control director, flight control flight path. controller. Yeah, flight controller, whatever that, that navigator? navigator, flight of the navigator. Sure. No, you know those guys have like the highest suicide rate. Yes, because it's an incredibly stressful job. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna be him, and he is gonna be the guy on his last fray. He's not particularly good at his job. It's an interesting. Uh, he's probably. Drinking a little bit too much, not quite alcoholic, but you know enough where he's like, where you're like, yeah, maybe this isn't a great guy. He's gonna be kind of a jerk, and you know his boss doesn't like him. He's stressed out. It's all because of the job. And when he goes into work today, he's dealing with this crashed plane, and then it starts happening to other planes. So okay. this entire this entire movie is gonna be shot from here on out in the flight control booth, and he amongst a handful of other people are managing the planes as they start having instrument problems and are starting to crash out of nowhere. And we're, from here on out, it's going to turn more thriller because now we have all these flight attendants who are under a ton of stress who are now uh, dealing with the stress of losing these people. The planes are crashing and, and some of them decide to bail some of them are like no fuck this job i'm out and they leave while other people are like you can't leave we have an obligation to try and save as many of these people as possible whole bunch of drama whole bunch of morals what would and, the real like would you say fuck it i'm out yeah if you're a flight attendant and like not a flight no, attendant, no 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 the, the, the flight oh air the, traffic the, the air traffic controller. Oh, thank yeah. you that is exactly the term yeah. i was looking well, for yeah, i mean if the job's like that stressful already and then all of a sudden you gotta like plane yeah fuck that 
all I'm asking, I'm 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 an old school it's head of the studio, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm 80 years old. I want to see where they're like vector vector. <laughs> anyway, you're 80 years old, so you're mm-hmm. quoting a movie from the 1980s. Yeah. I'm an old school hot. I thought you were going to when, go well, like, no, no, no. like like MGM. When I, like, when I turn 90s, I will quote movies from the 1990s. I figured you were going like MGM. Like she's knocked up. Fix it. See. <laughs> I thought you were going that way. In seven years, 1980 will be 50 years ago. I, I did watch this really Ugh. old movie. Oh, that's scary. This is how much roles have switched. Like, the girl the girl walks in. The, she was like a secretary or something. She goes, well, you might as well hit me because I really messed up, sir. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? This is real dialogue. Anyway, okay, go ahead. Sorry. All right, so we're going to film the rest of it as, like, this this kind of... Uh, if you've seen the mist kind of like that kind of mist-esque where everyone's trapped in this box and we're fighting morals about what is best for you what is best for other people and everyone's just trying to get through this day where they're saving as many lives as they can by bringing planes down and guiding them through instrument failure and at the the climax of the film we're going to find out that this is happening worldwide Okay. That this that all the plane's instruments are being malfunctioning through the electromagnetic bubble around the Earth. That all the stray radio signals, television signals, electricity are interfering with plane uh, control dynamics. So it's all, it's only a plane. It's not like the grids going down everywhere. Like t like car, electric car Teslas aren't like. Right, we're we're back in the '80s, so no Teslas, but Wait, yes. Oh, you said period. Yeah, uh-huh. shit. Sorry. Yeah. I'm ahead. Pay, head pay, of the studio. Pay attention. <laughs> yep. hey, hey, we're can, spending we're spending 3.5 billion dollars. Cindy, this movie. Cindy, can you bring in a? You want a coffee? Yes. C- Cindy, me. two coffees. You cream or sugar? <laughs> no, no, black. No, black, black, sir. But ma'am. <laughs> Get your own damn coffee. <laughs> okay. You said the coffee it was, was like black. Not right. the lady. <laughs> Cringe just damn C- bit. Cindy, <laughs> Cindy will bring it in really quietly. Don't worry about that. All right. Okay, continue. So, so that's I, I the... want a, a biscuit too, Cindy. Yeah, that was the... That thank was you, a Cindy. biscuit? A biscuit. <laughs> Got some crisps, please. <laughs> anyway, so the the film we are going to, to resolve with, this is happening all over the world, and... Planes are being grounded worldwide. We're shutting them down, and the the kind of epilogue of the film is now um, that the world has this massive decision to make because either they need to retrofit and redo the entire electrical radio spectrum grid that they have across the world, or find something to replace airplanes, or find a way to shield airplanes from these of the nineteen eighty technology. So that's kind of where we're going to build up. We're going to leave off with this kind of cliffhanger of what the hell do we do as a society now? That these things that we've become reliant on are now unreliable. So you're shooting not necessarily for a franchise, but a sequel. Maybe a sequel. I mean, then the sequel would be kind of like would be kind of lackluster, right? It's just like we fixed everything. It's one of those that are intentionally designed to make you the ending. To, to provoke, well, what does the world look like now? Kind of like the end of Fight Club, right? Uh, Fight all... Club never intended for a sequel, but you are left at the end of Fight Club going, what the hell does the world look like now? Fight Club did get a sequel. You're asking, in comic books, yes. You're asking where is your mind at the end of Fight Club. Mm, fair. I'm all about money. Mm-hmm. So if you can somehow get a toy line out of this too, we got sequels and a toy line. Okay, so Hot Wheels, we make airplanes. You're, you're, you're in the lead so far. All okay. right. Plus, you're the only one that went. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm the only one that went so far. Cindy, so, cough. No? Okay. Yeah. She, uh, so yeah, so to explain, the, the opening line inspired by true events, um, something similar did happen, I believe it was either in the late 70s or early 80s, happened in Texas, and there was a plane that was flying, instruments failed, and it crashed. And when they investigated the crash, the ambient uh, RF signals from bad cable television it interrupted and disrupted the plane and brought it down. So what Texas had to do was they had to re- they had to fix all the broken coaxial cable that was leaking radio waves or the television waves into the air and that's what you get when you talk about 
um, noise in a television line is it's either leaking signal or getting signal inside from ambient electricity around. And that eventually made the FCC, which now regulates how much noise can come off of coaxial cables from cable television and radio lines and all that fun stuff. So that is the reason I have to turn my cell phone off when I get on airplanes. Yes. So do we find out, is that what causes it in the sequel? Do we find out the reason why? Yes. Is it a, is it a mystery box that never gets opened? No, I think it's. I think we do get to that point. I think, you know, whoa, late whoa, whoa. climax. That's J.J. Abrams. We, that's not our studio. We don't do mystery boxes. Call it something else. Isn't that, wasn't that the name of our, our Quest, questionary cube? Thank you. Questionary, <laughs> questionary cube. cube. Yes. No, so we do get the, we do get to find that out um, near the end of the climax or near the the climax in the climax where we've got we find out that's happening worldwide and no one really knows why and then the science the world scientists come on and then start explaining. Is it like what's a supernatural on. reason or is there are they just gonna like cut to like like a big dude sitting naked in an armchair like eating Cheetos like oh shit like changing channels on the TV. Like, every time he changes the channel, the plane goes down. I feel like there's an in-between there. Okay. Because it's worldwide. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think we... we, we what set... if he's got, a, like, a big fucking TV? I yeah, don't I don't know. think Supernatural. I think this is just... Okay. This is the the world as it is because we never created the... Kind of like a what-if film. We never created the, the, the screenings needed to verify that we aren't leaking too much of the signal into the atmosphere. Yeah, I genuinely like the idea. I go back on <clears throat> not having enough money for Mark Ruffalo. I like the, 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 the psycho idea, the, the, the executive decision idea where you've got Steven Seagal. He's going to be the hero. He's going to get into the plane and get the bomb. He fucking dies. Yes. Uh, not Anne Hesch. Uh, well, technically Anne Hesch, but I meant Janet Lee. You think she's a star of Psycho? She gets off in the shower, so I'm willing to sell my kids, my fictional kid, head of studio <laughs> kids. Let me make that clear. <laughs> and how much for the little girl? And uh, oh, how much for redacted, your women? Redacted. Redacted. <laughs> how much for your women? <laughs> to get to get, uh, we we need someone more. We need to sell this movie on this actor that's going to die. Because I like fucking with the audience. It's yes. a big middle. I'm ahead of the studio. I want to give the audience a big middle. Brian Cranston. He's like, well, no, I they did already it. did it. I, I did it. I did in Godzilla. They already did it in Godzilla. Well, who? Man, I don't want to use a Marvel actor, but then it's like, who isn't in Marvel? Right. So I like Mark Ruffalo as like the guy who dies, like the super nice guy that, that just not... happens to die. No, but, but. No, 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 no. We need someone. We need someone crazy. Someone who, someone like The Rock, or Vin no. Diesel. No, the, listen to me. The they plane have, would go down because The Rock was on it. They it have. Was... They have contract. They have wording in their contract when they do a Fast and Furious movie that where it's like Jason Statham hits Vin Diesel twice, so Vin Diesel gets to hit him twice. But his his punch knocks Jason Statham down, so that means Jason Statham can can sweep kick him, and, it, and it's always a tie. So that means Why that the Rock. Why did we go from Fast to Furious to talking about? Because so this is it. If we, if we can somehow pull a Houdini and get the Rock to be like, look, man, we'll give you what we'll, we'll set we'll set your Iron Jungle workout in the airplane set. We'll give you whatever money you want. We want. We want the rock audience to okay, come. Okay, so instead of using the rock per se, you are an actor that's technically never died on screen to die in this role. Or someone who, someone whose career is based on, I'm always the hero. I get shot 50,000 times and get up. Well, or what if, what let's if bring someone this? out of retirement. Who can we bring? Sean Connery. He, well, he's dead. So? Ooh, are we going to Peter Cushing him? Yeah, but hopefully better. Okay. But I want this. I want I want the hero of the film. I'll change it. Sorry. I want the hero of the film to be Sean Bean. The guy that you always <laughs> oh, think. Yeah. Right, the second guy? Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Second I, guy? I'm totally in for, I'm totally guy. in for Sean Bean being the second guy. 100% yeah. in for that. I want him okay. to be the, the second uh, guy. All right, second guy is Sean Bean. I like that. I, I, want, I want the first guy to be everyday businessman. I don't want him to be like, I'm a Navy SEAL and I'm no, going to no, save no. the day kind right. of character. No, no, no. Where he's like... 
built like a brick shit house. And he's like, I'm an ordinary bank teller. I can't right. fit into the vault. Yeah, right. Like, okay, um, okay. what about Ryan Reynolds? Love it. We, we have Ryan Reynolds. He's a big name draw. He can play everyday man. But we'd have to give him an ironclad contract well, where he couldn't pull his like, Twitter shit. You'd got to be like, hey, uh, let me turn off my Mint Mobile phone. Oh, never mind. It's the 80s. Forgot it was period piece. But we'd have to have an <laughs> ironclad contract with him so he couldn't do his Twitter uh, social networking shit where he always gets on social network and the movie with David Fincher and he watches it. No, let him hype it. But we we don't want him to accidentally. We, yeah, we don't want him to spoil it. That's, That's why we're not I'm casting saying. Tom Holland. But oh. yeah, let's let's let him advertise it as if he's the biggest goddamn star in the whole movie. Yeah. So can we not? Would you not mention that Sean Bean's in the movie? Like, like play it up as like Ryan well, Reynolds, like the ultimate star, like you know, like thirty six size font, and then you got Sean Bean down here at like twelve. I would do that. And then the ending credits, Sean Bean would get that Just big, fucking full... Blastered, climaxed all over it. Yes. That, he, I mean, before anything else shows up, Sean Bean as stressed out air traffic <laughs> controller won. And then we move on. If I had one note, John, <clears> every can man. we change his name? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's fine. No, I, Husband, I, here's your... <laughs> Here's your child stressed well, out. Well, well, like, <laughs> what, if, what if there is so much chaos and whatnot, you don't even get the main character's name? Name of the film. Well, we can do that. Ooh, what, uh, name of the film. Flight Line. Flight Line? No, no, no. It's too close to like, Flight Plan, Jodie Foster's movie. Is that the one where like she has a kid and then the kid disappears and the kid thing? I think actually Sean Flat Bean line. was behind <laughs> it. Uh, nah, that's already the name of the movie. Um, flight. Flatline, <laughs> not the other one. Okay, all right, how about this? How about this? This isn't the title. This is the log line. Okay, the tagline. Mm -hmm. If you like Lost, you will really like this. If you like the first season of Lost, you will really like this movie. I think that oh. gives too much away. Oh, no, okay. I think I think what I want to do, those are all, like, those names are all, like, super like super generic. I want something specific. Like, Pacific like, Ocean. No. Oh. Um, like... Pacific the, what? Northwest? The, shut up. The oh. 630 to New York or something like that. The 630 to Nashville. <laughs> Cindy, <laughs> coffee, the three, the three fifteen to Yuma. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what if you did like flight one eighteen to? Was that the flight that crashed? In... No, that was flight eight one five. Oh, okay. The no, red line. No, flight Oceanic eight one five. No, no, no. What, what flight no. did you say? I think I said one eight. That's the flight that crashed in uh, Final Destination. Oh, it was. I'm, I'm fairly certain. I don't know. I've, yeah. I've seen Final Destination like once. Okay. Probably. Okay. Okay. What yeah, about but that, that'd be fine. Like the the three eighteen to Dallas. No. What what's a term? What, what what's like a what's like a working term? Uh, air flight air traffic controllers use maybe. Oh, I don't know. Let me check my last job where I was in stressed out air traffic controller. Cindy, can you bring in Google? <laughs> Cindy, bring in Google. We need to look up something. What about uh, leaving gate C? No? Ooh, that's not bad. I kind of like the flight one, though. Yeah, like yeah, flight. Me. What's your favorite number? Uh, 314. Cindy, never mind. I guess he was fucking joking. Flight 314. Cindy, what about the coffee, Cindy? I think you and I are the only ones who yeah, care about this movie anymore. Those two are over there on some <laughs> bit that no one's paying attention to. <laughs> no, he said... He, he asked Cindy for Google, and so Cindy brought me Google, and I was going to Google it, and Cindy, then he said no. Cindy, Meanwhile, are, we Cindy, have picked the name of the movie. Cindy, you work Flight for me. I don't even know who this is. Cindy, you work for me. See, and this is why I drink at work, and no one understands it. I'm oh, sorry. He, it was his fault. Flight Pi 314? Pi, yes, Flight it's 314. A, it's, it's directed by David Aronofsky. No, it's not. It's directed by Christopher Cronin Finch. I thought he was producing no, it. we fired him. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so anyway, that's my movie easy, for the this. electromagnetic barrier around the Earth. I like that. Or electromagnetic field around the Earth. Cindy, who's going next? Cody? Cody? Oh, thank you, Cindy. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. Can I please have the coffee, Cindy? Where the fuck is the coffee? Cindy's a very old woman. <laughs> All right, okay. The year is four thousand. Sorry, uh, the year 
is 4,253 to the exact number. Wait, say it again. 4,253 to the exact number. Okay. 2,000 something years in our future. Okay. Uh, so this is a period piece. This is a future period piece. Okay. When they make this movie 2,000 years from now, it makes sense. <laughs> okay. 2,000 years from now, uh, country lines, world borders have ceased to exist. We are all one unified people. What's the, the, name, of, what's the name of it? It makes... Earth. Earth. So, so making maps is a lot easier. You don't, yes. have to, you don't have to draw the lines. No, you still have to draw the lines because you still have districts and whatnot. Oh. But you just won't have the country lines. Okay. So you'll have, like, the former United Kingdom, the former America... Or it'd just be called probably America because we'll include Mexico, North America, Canada, and all this stuff. So will we still have states? Well, they'll basically be like how we got them now. It's like states will basically be counties and whatnot. So is there, a, is there a king of the world? No, no. We are a democracy. Worldwide democracy. Uh, representatives from the nations and whatnot. It is a little... And it is future, great, fantastic world, no political bullshit. We've all worked it out. We're all working together now. So, wait. So, Star Trek world. How, Star Trek world. How so, do we've, we, we've killed all lawyers. How do we get this information? Is this like a scrolling text, Star Wars style, or, or are we... Cindy, Cindy explained it in the first five Cindy, Cindy, I'm not paying for your SAG card. She's old. She don't need to get it. Uh, but, uh, uh, Everything is futuristic, like you think of flying cars, uh, hologram television sets. Uh, but because we are all so unified now, uh, some culture aspects have disappeared. So there's not as much ethnic food have, nowadays. Have, have we we've all religion? gone. We've all gone green. Globalization. Everything. Everything's everything. everything. Everything's everything. We've gone green. We're not killing any animals or anything. It's all protein paste. Uh, Protein paste, uh, vitamin supplements, that's all you need. Is there a religion anymore? We well, we found religion that. was... <laughs> was We found well, that religion was... a dark was joke to make in this movie studio. <laughs> we found religion was the primary cause for a lot of disputes, so we sort of kind of like axed that. It was That was somewhere in the 2900s, so that was a long, big, bloody thing for about almost 200 years. Mind okay. you. So okay. this was a big, big thing. But because that... That major religion war, that's when we start uniting, united, uniting. And we're now to our peak of human perfection, of Earthican protection. Have humans changed at all? Uh, there's been a lot more. Uh, I mean, we still look. No, same. no, like. We I'm killed say, all the people that look like you. Because I, I have a feeling maybe we should get James Cameron on this, because this is a lot of world building. This is a lot of world building. If we got James Cameron on it, he's going to be two hours of world building into this movie. Like, and, and that's a time. That's honest. a subject for another one. <laughs> and like, if it's James Cameron, it may actually get made the year this movie <laughs> takes place. <laughs> so, cultures have uh, intermingled. Uh, there's not necessarily more of a black ethnicity, uh, Hispanic ethnicity. We've like we've now gotten to the point where there's. Some lingering effects of that, but we're like just human now. Does okay, that, that makes sense. The closest to a utopia as it can be on Earth. We've gotten rid of all the bullshit, all the baggage. Basically, no capitalism whatsoever because just help people out, right? Okay. All right. So it's definitely a fantasy film. You're right. It is a fantasy. It is a scientific fantasy. So, so you, you could say, say like a sci-fi. Oh, no. I like that name. We should right. make a network. We we'll call it Siffy. <laughs> But still, in these 2,000 years, we have not made alien contact at all. For well, back in other words, like, we have seen glimpses of other civilizations out there, but they're still too far away. Okay. Still too far away. And we've just now gotten to the point, 4,000 years, where something has blipped into our solar system. Wait, no, I don't mean to... Uh, do we know if the Earth is a circle or a flat... Don't you fucking start. This is... We've gotten rid of all the flat earthers. We told them, hey, we'll take you to the edge, and we just threw them in a pit. Oh, so we're taking a stand. Okay, good. good. I just, either way, I mean, I don't care. I just wanted to make a stand. See the all way. right, but... Where are we on vaccine? No, 
Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to start so, this. We're not. Like right, I said, sorry. no political bullshit, Adam. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Just <laughs> this is not for you to make your left wing, right wing stand in a we, movie piece. We all wear masks. We we yeah, yeah. we all wear masks. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so for the first time, something bleeps into our solar system. Aliens curse on the radio waves. <laughs> sorry. All of a sudden, there's almost a half moon sized spaceship just in between Mars and us. I'm sorry. It's my goal every podcast to make Daniel look at his face. Cindy. Cindy. I don't know, Cindy. We're out of control. <laughs> Bring in some Xanax, Cindy. I got some. Okay. Aliens have just warped into our solar sure, system. Sure, yep. <laughs> In between Mars and Earth, we have do have a Marsian colony. So, wait, wait. So they they like jump into the solar system? Yes. Okay, so it's not like they they like traveled into the solar system. They like teleported. Yeah, they so, warp right. spaced in. So right. okay. we didn't like watch them. We just, yeah, it's just like oh, we've been waiting for five thousand years for them to get here. Right. We've kept them in our sights. So they just boop, and they're like, what the hell? It's uh, Mars and uh, Earth. They're talking back and forth. What okay. are they doing? What are they doing? Okay, so have we of humanity developed FTL? We have not gotten that capability yet. Okay. Uh, for the movie exact FTL. A faster than light travel. Thank you, sir. What's NFT again? Does anybody under- do we I under- still no. don't know. <laughs> At that time, have we understood what NFTs are? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. For I think for the most part, we've gotten rid of all that. Because I just bought one of those $99 Trump ones, and I, I don't understand what to do with it. I haven't gotten it. Don't you else. sell it? You shove it right Did you really do it? Hell no. Oh, I was going to say. Okay. You were so, so honest we're at the, the alien ju- jumps in, hyper comes out of hyperdrive. It's about mm-hmm. the half the size of our moon. Our, our moon the so, size of this ship. So it's clearly. Next Mars, it's in the space in between. It right. hasn't. It does not. It does have considerable amount. It's not fucking up any gravity or anything like that. Because we, that could be seen as an act of aggression on right. the side oh, of okay, the okay, 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 okay. Okay, so right. aliens warping. Aliens warping. Aliens be warping. We then, title. <laughs> we then, title. because our systems are so frenetic, for about six months they just sit there. Okay. As we try, we're getting signals from them, and they're getting signals for us. But our systems aren't compatible, so we're working around the clock to figure out what the hell they're communicating. Are they doing anything? And then, then the first line that we decipher, we would like a McRib. But do we still have McRibs? No. Oh, I get is it. it because they don't make them anymore? Or because it's like that off season where they don't we don't, we don't like, have meat anymore. Like the shamrock. Yeah, shake. it's oh. all protein sludge. Oh. But they don't have like a fake like a. Well, I mean, are we sure that a McRib is actually? Well, no, well I mean, it's kind of questionable. Yeah. We don't even have McDonald's anymore, right? <laughs> no, this is when we start. We get about 45, 30 minutes in the movie, and this is when we start seeing the alien side. Where they're starting to see infomercials, advertisements, and commercials. Because they can distinguish that all of our uh, soap operas, reality TV... Well, they, reality TV, they had a little bit, like, making sure that it wasn't real or not. So they know it's entertainment. They know it's entertainment. But Do they, they know are what also, the Kardashians are famous for? They have no idea. They have no idea. But they've also gotten to a certain point in their society where they've done the same thing as us. They have... Oh, we're the best that we can be of ours. Up. We not deplete any natural resources anymore. Everything's recyclable. We're not killing any more animals. But they've evolved so far that the idea of flavors and different types of combinations of food have lost all meaning to them. But our past infomercial stuff had finally reached them, and it reignited that in them. So we're not like gods to them. We're like... Like... We're the fast food joint on the opposite <laughs> side of the town in the slums. You could say <laughs> that we're the restaurant at the end of the universe. Ah. Is that a reference? Is that yeah, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I fucking should. I, I should have guessed that. <laughs> but idiot. they got Come this on. information about our civilization so late, we've evolved past almost at the same point as them on this dietary so thing. Are they, are so these... they can physically recreate the, the physical shape of the stuff, but they have no idea what it's supposed to taste like. They have no idea, like, oh, this is what hamburger is. This is what chicken is. But we don't, but we don't know what they taste like. 
Right. But, Wait, so are these aliens like the the equivalent of the universe's universe is hipster? Are they hipster aliens? No. It's do, do they look like are they humanoid aliens? Yeah, well, this is a very important question is what do the aliens look like? Yeah, that yeah. They are human enough humanoid enough like. So imagine ooh, ooh, person ooh. with tentacles. Well, okay, this, so so something that Kirk would sleep with. Yes. Okay. Is there something that Kirk wouldn't sleep with? Gorn? Oh. Well, Maybe. we don't know what actually happened on that planet. <laughs> it was only his retelling of it that we figured out what happened. I, I that, smashed him they, with a rock. Can they <laughs> look like like the big headed gray aliens and like we like randomly got a transmission from them? So that's why we think that they look like, and then that's what they turn out to looking like. We can do that if it appeases the normalcy that we need to identify them as people. They look like ETs. No, they look the glowing finger. They oh, the glowing finger. Not, not actually his finger in the porn parody. I, I believe, mean, I believe so. But that's when we start having the conflict. They have developed this technology to come to our side of the universe to figure out these items to get a new concept of taste of getting these items that they have now romanticized and like they look like they're enjoying these things so much and they get here and they can't have it so Mm -hmm. so what's the threat in the story are they threatening to destroy our planet is that like the well if if we do not get what we want we're going to no it then starts to go into this banter where it starts to go down that line but it then reignites the human passion for food, and then it sends us plummeting back down into 2000s. Because now, like, oh, that does taste good. So it we, reignites capitalism. We've, we've eliminated, like, all chefs. Like, everything's, like, taste... Like, everything comes in, like, capsule form. Is that what we're doing? It's the most efficient. So are we all, like, super... We get the rock, because in the future... Why does everybody every, have to be the fucking rock to because you? Because everyone would be super ripped... Then when, because I mean, we're, we we cut out all the the actually good tasting food, so everything's super ripped. And then when we go back two thousands, we get John Favreau. Okay. My my point is, of this this entire movie, is once temptation is gone, and then is reignited back into the people, just like even for a good purpose of preventing global war, it's going to send our culture spiraling back down into the abyss of capitalism. So, so a McRib commercial from the 2000s brings down Utopia? I kinda, that's actually kind of cool. Not just a McRib commercial, but the idea of that. Okay. But, so There's been stupider movies out there. We, I thought I did a pretty good job. Besides, no, I'm just wrapping my head around. It. I'm not saying no, it's stupid. I'm so just ba- wrapping my head basically, around it. humanity got rid of basically passion, passion for the arts, passion for you know making food. It took away the. It took away. So imagine basically humans became Vulcans, where it's all about logic. Let's do what's right. Let's do the most efficient thing possible. We do them. what we need to do to survive. And everything else is. They like we we've, we've grown to realize, okay, we've doing all this stuff just for simple pleasures. It's harming everything else by doing this. So we need to be more selfless and do what's right for the collective as a whole. May I suggest a writer and possible director for this? You may. It, it seems. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it seems no r- oh, right up his alley, uh, and his name literally just left my head. Uh, <laughs> Office, yeah. office space. Uh, Mike idi- Judge. Mike Judge. He did uh, Idiocracy. Idi- Idiocracy. I think he'd be perfect. As long as we can use the title of "Please Pay at the Next Window." I like that. A McDonald's commercial brings down a utopian society. It makes sense. That's the tagline. No, that's too long. What? Of the tagline. Please play at the next window? No, no, no. That's the title. The tagline is The McRib Brings Down <laughs> Utopia. I'm sorry. I thought it was a pretty good uh, idea. It's a, it I is a good idea. I thought I was getting more. No, no, idea. I'm just mulling it over. Like, because, like, I can see these scenes, right? Because, like, my initial question was, why didn't the aliens just go, oh, all right, and then go home? 
but it's so I can see the scene where they're like where they're talking about it and and the you know you get that text message hey we want a McRib and then you have like all the like the the big wigs of the the UN government and everyone staring around at the message going what the fuck's a McRib yeah you want a what and then like you get like peace council and stuff like you know, the emissaries show up and everyone's shaking hands and stuff and then they're like this is what we want and they show them the commercial and everyone's oh. looking at the commercial Can together. Be like the original no, like no. 1980s this, like grainy this is, yeah this is how we introduce our main character where's the beef our oh, main fuck. character is like an archivist or, or whatever and yeah. he or she's like the slacker goofy. Vincent Ventresca Vincent Ventresca <laughs> we're gonna uh, restart his <laughs> career the, you know, he he or she's the, the classic goofy slacker, like, uh, yeah, I get it, but this stuff's kind of cool. Oh, no, the girl that we need to get is the girl from Stranger Things. Uh, the one that works at the ice cream shop in the movie oh. studio. Uh, her. Uh, I don't a, know her I'm name. I'm a studio but... head. I don't lower myself to Netflix. Shut your whore mouth. You, I want this movie to be Millie, made by Netflix. So that Millie way I have Bobby more liberty. No, it's... I I know what she looks like. I can't. I, don't I know think she would be perfect for Let's an artist. Let's just get Scarlett Johansson so I can work with her. Yeah, because if like because of our no, because she'd want to play like a black dude. Because <laughs> to a certain point, we have actually have a lot of lost recorded medium out there. There are hell. I've heard that there's some episodes of Doctor Who that aren't even known to exist anymore because they lost the original footage for it. Uh, they lost the original footage, and then the BBC didn't think the show was going to do very good, so they didn't even bother it. Right, so like, but it'd be... Oh, no, it's fine. I wasn't going to go on a rant or anything. Cut me off, Cody. Uh, uh, Maya Hawk is her name. Let, let me see. I thought she was the... That was... Yeah, isn't that her? Uh, I don't know. I thought Maya Hawk was the Sadie chick, the younger chick with red hair. No, no never mind. Never no, mind, no, no, no. That's, um... That's, which one's Maya? That's uh, Sadie, the one on the left. That's Sadie Sink or whatever. My left or your left? The... The left of the picture. Oh, wait. It's still the same left. Make the L's. The first... Jesus. What? So, as I was saying... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm just joking, Cody. Okay. okay. But we can lose full episodes of TV series. Oh, is that Ethan Hawke's uh, Ethan daughter? Hawk. Yes. Yes. I know Uma Thurman. I'll talk to her. I'll, I'll get her in. But we've lost, there's so much lost media out there. I help Quentin Tarantino with his fetish. So. That there is now. Just imagine how much easier it is to do that with commercials and stuff like that. Like, so you get to a certain point where we realize, hey, McDonald's, you're killing people with your gluttonous food and whatnot because it's not good for you. And we finally get that point like, you know what? We probably shouldn't be doing this. And so concepts like fast Question. food chains start going away. Question. Um... Do you think we're going to get McDonald's on board if we're saying that their gluttonous food is killing us? I, I think you're gonna what you're going to have to do is make it copyright neutral. Or get Burger King to sponsor the movie. Yeah, Burger King don't care. No, yeah, we, we're... I'm not... I'm not... I'm not a well, just, just, just pitch not. it to Burger King and be like, Hey, look, we're going to make a movie about how McDonald's kills people. And Burger King's like, yes, here's our lawyer. Yeah, so... <laughs> And it doesn't necessarily have to be the McRib, but it's that I initial idea of the McRib. No, of, uh, the McRib, it's not in season right now. Now you say McRib, man. Everyone like McDonald's. Maybe can, so, so maybe can, you say can the, the main character, the archivist. Can her name be Wendy? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, is she going to be a manic pixie girl? They're supposedly coming back in fashion. I, I can see that. I, yeah. I don't pay I attention to girl that. fashion, so no, I no, no. The the character, a character type. They're called what are they? Oh. Manic pixie girls. I, I have no idea what you're talking oh, about. Okay. <laughs> I, I have a completely unrelated thought that I absolutely love. Right, Cindy? Do you know what it? No. Okay, so so we've got the the scene where the the aliens and the the, the person are are sitting and and they're talking and they're like, this is the McRib, and they're like, oh, we don't know anything about that, and you know that kind of like that. You tried to order something off the menu and you don't get it, kind of disappointment. Mm -hmm. And you're like, and the aliens are like, oh. And they're like, okay, what about this? And it's a different commercial for a different, like, limited of time, like the Wendy's Pub Burger. Oh, that's and they're like, uh, no, we don't Shamrock have. Shake. Yeah, we don't have that either. And they're like, oh. 
next one and it's like the quesarito or fucking the, the mexican pizza and they're like how about this and then like you get that that joke that stays overseas welcome just a touch where they're like yeah, yeah, yeah. and this maybe and where they keep trying to order something and they can't order it and then we leave on <coughs> with all right fine we'll have a mixture yes that actually was okay. bad <laughs> all right i want to make another casting another casting call the head of the UN or whatever this global... Th- I want it If to you be, say The Rock, I swear to God, I'll leave I want it to be Zach Galifianakis. Okay. I'm fine with this. I, I'm fine with this as long as we can have... Um, Serious Zach Galifianakis? No. The, um, the representative for the United States be the guy from Space Force. The old guy from Space Force. Um, the dude from the office? Steve Carell? No, not Steve Carell. The other one. There's another guy? Yeah, no, the old it. guy. Oh, what's his name? Hold on. Are Who? we gonna let Zach Galifianakis just ad lib the whole time? What if? Okay, what if Zach Gal- no. John Malkovich? Oh, John. Okay, Malkovich. so you okay. can have John Malkovich as the the United States let's, representative. And let's have- do the old switcheroo. <laughs> Zach Galifianakis will be the alien, whether he voices him or we put prosthetics oh, on. Because mm. that way, no, we, that way, want- that way we can let Zach do his thing. No, no, because I don't want it to be like, like alien just show up there speaking basis. English. I don't want them. I want them to be like with like Sub- with uh, subtitles or anything because they don't have our same tongue. But couldn't you just do a throwaway line like, "Oh, we developed interstellar space travel, think, and also this little pill that you can eat"? And but I find that <laughs> so easy sometimes. Well, they did it in Guardians of the Galaxy, and you didn't bitch. You have to come Actually, he did. He didn't have a pill. They had, <laughs> that, did they had that thing on the back of the ear. I know, but it was it wasn't even mentioned. Like it was a little line on the the jail lineup that said he had like a universal translator thing. All right, so we got Malkovich and Galifianakis as the representatives. We've got uh, Ethan Hawke's daughter as the man. She has a name. Yeah, Ethan Hawke's daughter as yeah. Manic Pixie Girl. The what other major casting do we want to? Do? I mean, I think we got to pick actors for the alien, but I think they should be kind of like low level nobodies or people who can act like Doug Jones. Nobodies. Doug Jones, the one that the dude is oh. famous for playing in costumes. Daisy Ridley. Yeah, and Doug Jones. She, she does uh, Abe from Hellboy. Abe Sapien. He oh, does. Oh, he the, does the, the ice water guy. The, the oh, ice cream man. From yeah. Legion. Yeah, okay. he's he's famous for being. Uh, he yeah, did. He'd be real good. He, he did Pan and Pan's Labyrinth. He mm-hmm. was the pale man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hellboy. I know Doug. Okay. Cindy, give me Doug's number. Yep. Yeah, him and how's that who's coffee the, coming? Who's the lady you suggested? Daisy Ridley. Yeah. Yeah. Her, him and Daisy Ridley as the two I main so. alien representatives. I'll, I'll she talk. To, come back. I'll talk to her, but she's been kind of burnt by space with Star Wars. I don't. Think she? And I just, was pitching her a, a role in a new Riddick movie, and she said no. So and just I, and just for shits and giggles, uh, we'll have a third gender on the alien species. So we'll have like a binary. All right, that's getting a little. T- <laughs> I don't know about. Sorry. <laughs> that's a. Let's let's move on. Okay. <laughs> any, any other questions? I don't get the joke. I'm sorry. Don't what? worry about. It. We're not gonna do it justice. What? What if we did more instead of instead of a movie? Because that's a lot of info to put out. What if, unless you're James Cameron, but we're getting Mike Judge. What if we did like a we sold the series to Netflix or Hulu? I don't know. You could make that work as a movie. There's, there's that's tons a of a lot of info. Okay, but, but there's a ton of world world building in like uh, every movie that's sci-fi like that. You were just bitching about how you don't drop down to Netflix when we wanted my no, no, no. I, I, per- Maya, right? okay. I, I personally then, don't watch It could be man. Netflix. I don't really know how it's cheap. I, I don't personally watch Netflix, I, but I, I like... I call her by her last name. Yeah. I, like Miss Hawk. Money. I like money. So, uh, I don't watch the You can, you can do it movie. friggin' Twilight style, Harry yeah. Potter style, break it up in two movies. Well, I mean, Minority Report had a ton of world building and it was fine. Edge of Tomorrow had a ton of world building. I mean, the first Avatar movie built a whole new world, and it wasn't excessive. There's a you could do a lot of world building very, very quickly. Uh, Ready Player One did fantastic world building. You probably have to to like do narration from Maya Hawke's character's point of view Is to kind of build Uma into Thurman's it. Daughter? Uma Thurman's daughter. Yes. Okay. 
Um, you'd probably have to go through like her point of view and do narration. Ooh, could we like, do, um, could we do like fun little Easter eggs where like she's going through like random stuff and like she sees like Uma Thurman dancing in that one movie and she's like, "This is stupid," and then like goes to the next thing. I would love to do that. And That's of course, they've got to have like a DCP like record or something in the nurse collection. <laughs> So that's my idea. What do you think? We're, what was the title? Pull up to the window. Please, next window, please. Please pay at the next window. Please pay at the next one. Okay. All right. Your Cindy. Fucking coffee. Uh. Your your your. Okay. Uh, so you start black screen, big explosion. We're gonna do some literal. Wait, literal. how are we gonna see the explosion if it's a black screen? Because. The explosion happens, and it's like a, I don't know, a big bang. So we're going to do, like, some literal world building. Like okay. The first minute's going into literally just, like, a whole entire I don't like his planet attitude. coming together. Like, we're going to start it, you know, like, from the very beginning. Planet form, I mean, we'll speed it up a little bit, you know. We're, we're not doing, you know, a billion-year movie, so on. So we build this whole planet. Just happens to look like Earth. You know... We're, we're moving through, we watch evolution happen, human society grows up, comes up to our present day. Uh, they don't, they're running out of resources, they have to find something to do. Scientists find an Earth-like planet. This planet just happens to have faster than light travel. They appear outside this planet, you find out I don't like the way you're looking at me right now. You find out that this planet that we've been watching... I'm not Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> this planet that we've been watching, and, you know, all these main characters, you know, the the whole plot is, you know, this, this planet is slowly dying, and they have to find a solution. So, you know, they build a team, Armageddon style, they... They assemble an army to go to this planet because they don't they don't know if there's anything on there. So they travel to this planet. Well, you find out that these are actually aliens the whole time. So you've been watching and following human like they actually look and a, a, you know appear as we do. So then they travel to our planet and. You know, our planet, you know, isn't clearly as sophisticated. What? Uh, we got a, our studio has a movie coming out in 2023 called 65 with the exact same plot. 65. I, I haven't even gotten to the plot yet. Okay. What happens in 65? Just, look, you we'll tell you afterwards. You don't let 65? me finish. I've never heard of 65. Or is it 64? What, what is that? It's got Kylo Ren in it. <clears throat> what does that have to do with anything? Uh, Just go. Continue. Okay. So, before I was so rudely interrupted, so they come to the planet, and you know, our clearly our society has not evolved. We don't have interstellar space travel. I mean, we've never killed anything in outer space. We're pretty good at killing, you know, ourselves. Watch the trailer. But uh, now you're making me doubt everything. I no, no, was, you you keep going. Thought, Adam's being Adam. I thought this was a really good idea. Adam Driver, why the fuck are I going to think of Kylo Ren's name? Oh. Especially since it's your name. So, so you know, then so then the story has jumped from the quote-unquote aliens that we've been watching to our society. You know, our society has generals and all this stuff, and they're like, well, you know, we don't want, you know, what happens when you blow a nuke up in space? You know, do we know what's going to happen? How are we going to try and fight a land battle with these people? You know, what do we even know of what they want? And so then you find out that they they come up with a plan. They're going to send transmissions out into space. So basically what they do is they send out... Why... I don't like that no one's talking. <laughs> we're listening. We're you're listening. the only one who's getting like legitimately <laughs> listened to. Yeah, we're listening. So, so basically, what they do is the the last the end of the movie is them sending clips into space. You know, so they they send the clip from Independence Day where it's 
Randy Quaid, you know, saying, I'm back and blowing up the spaceship. So they're threatening them with our movies? No, no, no. We're, we're threatening we're, we're them. We're threatening them. Because they're, like, they're like, we can't, you know, we don't, we, we have nothing to arm our space shuttles to, you know, to do anything, you know. So we, it's all a bluff. Yeah, it's it's basically us, you know, say, you know, they show clips, you know, the Independence Day clips. It's it's different enough from sixty five. I thought you were, I thought you were going like to different. 65. They show clips from Armageddon no, where I, they blew up an mm-hmm. asteroid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They show, you know, they've got they've got the clip of the tenth Doctor saying, you know, the Earth is defended. Oh. They show, you know, all Which these. Was it? Is that Eccleston? No, it's David Tennant, oh. and he's technically tenth. Meta Crisis Eleventh and Fourteenth now, um, but like they we we basically show them like this this clip show of you know why not to mess with us, and then the very last line is from Starman and it's Jeff Bridges where it says uh, when humanity is at their best when things are at their darkest or I think it's. Humanity's at their brightest when things are at their darkest. And so, and then that's it. Okay. Look, all, all right. I see is so a lot of that, dollar right. signs because we have to pay for all the rights. And we, this studio does not own any of those. Okay. Well, my Here's studio so. owns everything. <laughs> so, so, how do the aliens respond to that? We, we don't, don't know. know. It's, a, it's open-ended. Uh, okay, so it's, it's just the it's, cliffhanger. It's a, did the bluff work? Did, are they like, well, you know, Clearly, this isn't right, you know. So it's kind of open to interpretation. Okay, so like up until that point, it's like social drama between the aliens trying to acquire yeah, and, resources. That yeah, the aliens and then, that are like, we can't do shit about this. And then at the same time, you're like, well, who do I root for? You know, I've watched, I've literally watched this entire planet from birth until this point. You know, mm-hmm. I've followed these characters. They have family and lives. You know, they they're just doing what they need to do to survive. You know. You know, if if our society had evolved different, you know, would we, you know, and we were running out of resources, you know, would we question, you know, going to another planet? So the, you're like, this is like an A24 drama. I, I don't know what that is. They're a film studio. They do like the Green Knight, Hereditary. They do what they call elevated horror. I guess. I mean, it's more of like, a, I guess, a think drama think piece so like no humor i mean you can have like sprinkles of humor in here but it's not like a comedy right i know i i'm just getting the base oh like... no yeah because that's where we have in that clip show that there's some aliens we have a reprisal of samuel jackson like i'm sick of these motherfucking aliens on my motherfucking planet you know you can you can do the you know it's it's gonna be disney's gonna do it so hell we got the rights of freaking star wars marvel all that stuff so what like you know, Disney's gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna shoot this to the Disney uh, yeah. execs. Since you're being such an asshole about it, exactly. Yeah, we're we're coming. And out. I don't particularly like the way you talk to Cindy. Cindy, that's why Cindy quit. <laughs> she left. She's been that's why you never got your coffee. <laughs> but like you know, you do the you do the portals the the portal scene. You know, you you send out this clip show. So the portal scene from shut up. So you're cashing Avengers. Oh. So you're cashing in on nostalgia and all of that. But it also makes you think. So these aliens, they look like us? Yes. They're, exactly. There's society, no society There's like literally no difference for no the difference. for the audience. There's, we got to give them we got to give No, that's the a whole shortcut point. for the audience. That's the whole point is that up until they have traveled from their planet to ours, you assume that it's that it's a movie about humanity deciding how we're going to continue to survive. Okay, so I'm seeing The Rock as a <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. The Rock uh, is a... Com- do we you need to get here, you an autograph? Here. I want <laughs> The Rock... What about a body pillow? I want The Rock in the movie in a 30-second clip where he's just like, yeah, I think this will work, and then that's it. No, uh, legitimately. Okay, so who are we going to cast as the leader of the aliens? Are you looking at it like an old grizzled man, or are you looking at it as a young buck? What are you, uh, family man. You want to relate to him because he's got a family. So like William Hurt in Lost in Space. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's dead, so... Uh, well, why'd you bring him up? Uh, why don't we just you know, bring him back? 
Yeah, he's no. on the alien side. He I didn't don't, die on that side. I don't do Peter cushioning. Um, I don't. You just said we should do that. I don't push him for cushion. Um, I don't know who I want. I didn't think about casting. I just thought about the... Because you were all, you didn't do the assignment. Hmm. I thought really hard on this. I thought it was good. No, yeah. I'm enjoying it. Let me think. What about what about uh, one of the old dudes from Game of Thrones? No? One of the old dudes? No. Uh, oh, that guy. Brandon. Lee. He's dead, no, too. No, the one. Uh, no, the. Uh, uh, he's uh, from The Mummy. And Brandon Fraser. Brandon, Brandon Fraser, thank you. Yes. What about him? Ooh. I want him. As Cash the leader of the alien? Yeah. Okay. The he, all around nice guy. People love him. Family like, man. You talk about nicest people in the Hollywood list. He's right up there with uh, Keanu Reeves. It's like, it's almost tied between the fucking. Yeah, it's, it's him, Kevin Spacey, and. Kevin Don't Reeves. you <laughs> fucking start. I want, I want Adam Sandler in there too. I like Adam Sandler in serious roles. Okay. Have you, have you okay. ever seen him in Rain Over Me? Doesn't he usually... Oh, he, him and Funny People? Doesn't yeah. he usually grow, like, facial hair for serious... Yeah. Seri- isn't that, like, his, his shortcut for... Uh, uh, Spanglish. So. Yeah, he was good in Spanglish. Uncut Gems? I haven't seen it. I haven't I've heard it. it's good, though. All right, so what do you think about Tom Holland being the Earthling that put together the video package they send to the aliens. So but he's like he's like a like a I don't know, like a New York State University filmographer student or something like that. And he just so happens to have someone that's he he has to have a way into why they choose him, but we would have to tell him like absolutely nothing. Right. But I can see that. And you know who's playing here's the important question. Because we've had a lot of classic uh, actors play. Who's going to be the president of the United States? Because I'm assuming since this is a United States production, we're going to be... I want Keanu Reeves. No, no, no. I can't have Keanu Reeves. No. Yes. We have Keanu Reeves, and then we use a clip from The Day the Earth Stood Still. Not the Ridge, the remake. Right. Wait, like so it. we're going to, like, uh, Ronald Reagan him? Like, he was yeah. an actor and became the president? Yeah. Okay. Like it's real Ke- uh, President Keanu Reeves. Wait, so they like, put those American? clips in where he's controlling yeah. vehicles and stuff with his mind, and it's supposed to psych out the aliens. Their yeah. president can control the exactly. vehicle with the mind. What the hell? Wait, are we doing long hair beard Keanu Reeves or yes. crew cut? I don't like long hair. Mm. Oh, I like long hair Keanu Reeves is amazing. I like crew cut Reeves. He's so sexy. We do have crew cut Reeves and the flashback clips. No, no. Don't you? You could ask him to pull it back in a ponytail. No. Oh yeah. He's, no, he's got. See, he grows patchy facial hair. So in John Wick, he like colors it in. Yeah. I don't. I don't like have, it. Have you looked at your beard? I don't color it in. <laughs> uh, no. The, That's his platform. Uh, patchy beard. Bill and Ted hair. Nah, his length, hair was bad in that. Movie. Bill and Ted hair length are point blank or point blank. Yeah. Po- uh, point break. Point break. Thank you. But the John Wick length is too long, man. Nah, too long. I like it. I'm talking about a Ridge Bill and Ted, not not the Bill and Ted the new one. The face of music one. Well, yeah. it was still bad. I yeah. haven't seen music. it yet. All right, Keanu Reeves is the president. We got Brent Fraser as the military leader of the Space only Force. only if he gains his weight back from the whale to do it. If he's the whale size, yeah. yeah I don't necessarily think he has to be the whale size. The Whale is a movie he started in recently. I, okay. I know about The Whale. Okay, sorry. Damn. Yeah. No, no, I, 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 I fucking know about I, The Whale, Cody. Bring in the copy of The Whale. I, I have a rant for The Whale for the next Ridge episode. I, so. I wrote The <clears throat> Fucking Whale, Cody. Never mind, Cindy. Um, okay, what other casting can we do? We got Tom Holland as the Manic Pixie Girl version. Uh, the guy, dude. The video for you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, because that upheld the younger generation. Are YouTube we go- saves the world. Are we going to do a love story where, like, Brendan Fraser's daughter on this ship no, no sneaks out and meets with no. Tom Holland? That's no. all it is. Love story. No, I don't want a love no, story. No, no, no. It's a think piece. You think about why they no, fall I don't want, they, you think, I don't want a love story. Are they going to be I compatible? I don't. <laughs> no, because on their so part, it's switched. <laughs> it's switched. <laughs> 
Yep. What? Think about it. It's switched. There's a whole lot of fetish there. That yep. could be. In- uh huh. So or Brennan- we need to change it so that Tom Holland's a porn director, <laughs> and he's like, we need to get these guys <laughs> yeah. on the so planet. So Brendan Fraser. <laughs> so Brendan Fraser's son sneaks out of his shit. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. Well, are we going to cast in the Brendan Fraser? Is it just Brendan Fraser's family, or is it Brendan Fraser's got his... Well, I mean, you, see, you see his family because you, you, you... But, have but I mean, it's his, whole, it's his so whole society in, like, cryosleep or something? No. They're all the, on the, this giant like, The entire society doesn't travel with him. So he's, it's just Brendan Fraser. He's, it's like him, scientists, and then basically... You can put, like, an, a faceless army in cryosleep because they don't know what they're going to encounter. They... They don't Can know anything about her. Be the leader of the army. For the love of God, the Rock doesn't have to be they, in everything. They don't know anything about our planet except that it's similar to theirs, and theoretically, it should have the same resources. So, is it sort of like an Ender's Game sort of feel? Like none of the grunts know anything about the higher, like the higher ups know they're going to face humanoid. Versions. No, no, no. They, the the Brendan Fraser doesn't know what's there. It's literally like, hey. We found this planet that's similar to ours. It's possible, like lost in lost in space. They're going to build a gate, or they're going to build a way for us to transport resources from one planet to another, or transport. He said, "What are you smiling at?" <laughs> All right, so I think I've got the end scene for your movie, right? Wait, wait, can we put Jeff Goldblum in this? No, uh, why? Why not? Because it's Jeff Goldblum. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, 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 yeah, this uh, planet. Uh, this planet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, the end scene. All right, all right so I think I got your end scene, right? So so they show up, social conflict. Somehow, you know, Tom Holland puts together a video package, gets it to the White House. There's this big to-do about, like, him and the Secret Service, and Keanu Reeves is there, and he's like, no, let him talk. And then they get the, get the USB drive, and they're like, yes, this is fantastic. We'll send it to him. We'll call the bluff, right? So they send it out, and it cuts to, you know, Adam Sandler, Brendan Fraser, who are there preparing for war. Okay. Oh, I forgot Sandler. Right? They're preparing for war. They're going to... Airheads reunion. They're going to hit the button that's, like, launch the troops. Right, we're gonna thaw out the truth. We're gonna send them to the planet. I love it. Give me a dirty look. <laughs> oh, they get the um, the the video package. They watch it. We see the entire package zoomed in full screen, and then it then like as after the Jeff Bridges line, it it gets grainy and pulls out, and Brendan Fraser's hand is over hovering over the button, and Adam Sandler is the last thing you hear, and he's like, "Well, what are we gonna do?" Mm. And then. Fade to black credits. And, and then no, no. <clears throat> I like all that except we pan over and there's a top spinning on You ever just want to beat the living shit out of him? Every day. Yeah. Or what if after the end of Jeff Bridges thing, Tom Holland's character forgets he he left a, a footage of him that he sent over the internet. <laughs> is this? Are, 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 are we <laughs> ass- <laughs> pretending to say that Tom Holland, the most innocent man in Hollywood, has accidentally sexted the alien race? <laughs> yeah, I think that's funny. <laughs> I think that be piece, not a comedy. <laughs> that okay. might happen in Cody's movie. But okay, not here. right, right, right. Okay. Yes, I actually that's I the feel of my movie. It's going to be sort of that like. Uh, Dry, like, what the hell we do, sort of, Tom like... Tom Holland masturbating, got it. <laughs> I like, I like, I like that ending scene. That's actually a cool scene. I'm All still right. pissed off at you. I thought it was really good, and you're like, you didn't even freaking do it. Who's going to direct it? I am. No, I, I ain't pissed spending the money on that. Christopher Nolan. <sighs> you know how... That, you, that, you know well, how wait, the, the, he can have, like, the serious atmosphere you're going for for the movie, right? He, like, you, I like him that. You have to let him fuck with time somehow. In all of his movies, he fucks with time. Don't start a Batman rant. No, I'm saying, like, legitimately, he loves fucking with time in all of his movies. Yeah, how else do you explain how Bruce Wayne got all the way across the world so what, in Dark Knight Rises? What element, what time element are you going to let him fuck with? How about the part where we see the entire creation of the alien's... Uh, yeah, world in like five minutes. I was s- looking for a joke answer, but that's yeah, actually a legitimate funny. answer. That was a legitimate answer. Yeah. You got anything negative to say? 
Send it. All right. I what think a, I think we're a, at the judging part of the episode. I was gonna ask him if I had any more ideas for like the, what clips to put in. Oh. I mean, I thought of a couple, but. Okay. Um, well, we've said just movie clips uh, so far. What about part. historical clips as well? Like, not ask not what you can do for yourself, but ask what you can do for your country. Showing how we're unified front as well. What if we show the bomb of Hiroshima? Like, look what we're willing to do to our own people. What do you oh, think we're going to do to you? That's true. <clears throat> but. Uh, Last Starfighter? The scene where, like, they push the button, like, the. I forgot what it's called. Like, the. Yeah, it's like spaceship. the Death Bloom or whatever yeah, like it's called. Lotus uh-huh. or something like that. What about uh, Batman v Superman? What about, no. Uh, that what might about, make him kill themselves. What about, <laughs> there you go. It'll work. Uh, what about uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson? What? There's clips want. of him in there. Mm. I want the I want the the uh, Abrams Star Trek teaser where it shows them working on the Enterprise, and then it's got the <laughs> the J the JFK New Frontier speech about how we're gonna like mastery of the sky. That's you how know, you open com- it. Yeah, that's how you open it. But I, I'm like, oh, you're right, Cody. I like it. I like it. You just looked at me, and then your mouth was open. I was like, Cody might be dying right now. I'm like, I love it. I like it a lot. What the fuck? <laughs> what is in here? So I'm not for certain. What did Cindy put in your coffee? Well, yeah. Well, I think I... Funny thing. Okay. Rishi never got your coffee. She gave them both to me. Oh. And he never noticed, even though you're sitting right next to him. Fuck. I don't pay attention. Uh, I have a winner, and it's only because it's what I like to watch, and it's standing. Wow. You like to watch me? Yes. Wow. Get your ones out, baby. I know, I know. Legitimately, wow. I, legitimately wow. I like all of them. Okay. Right. I had Let's fun talking about Cody's, but I, when I watch a movie, I hate humor. Everybody at this... Uh, no, sorry. Daniel and Adam just do not get my sense of humor. I liked your movie. I just don't like humor. Yeah, yeah they, I, just, they just don't get... They don't want joy in anything, I apparently. don't. I, I yeah. legitimately How, don't. Now, wait a minute. How did I get dragged into this? Because I'm was, on a rant, damn it. I was supportive of your movie. Adam, I liked the Adam's idea. pretty... He's basically like Scrooge without any money. Well, no. it, it's, you know why? Because you won. That's uh, why I think I'm right. That's why it's and my that's fault. Wrong that, me. Uh, but that's hey, wrong with me. If it makes you feel better, I took away two points from you. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I was going to let it go this yeah. week. I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going to let it go. No, the, no. The only reason why I picked Daniels is because it's legitimately a movie I would watch. I do not like humor, and you are right. I there, there's no humor in mine. I feel like yours is more edutainment. It's not edutainment. It's it's. it's Approaching it's a, that line. It's a think piece. There's nothing Not educational about piece it. Think piece is the adult version of edutainment. How is it educational? <laughs> Tyler, I liked your idea. It's a moral story. Just minus not as much two I like points, my idea. Minus two points from me as well. <laughs> Look, it's not. It's just no, it's it's a movie. It's a movie whatever, I would like to see. I don't. Pick I don't Daniel, like. That's, that's fine. Every we all know the the bromance. You know, no, you know, well, well, you guys no, sit next to each other. It's I'm gonna make my winter speech feel real bad it's right fine. now. Oh, no, sorry. Go ahead, Dan. I like it's dark. Cool. I like dark stuff, man. Oh yeah, what's more dark than the annihilation of two different races? No, it's fine. Big <laughs> Cool. Cindy. No, oh, okay. Anyway, go ahead. You said you had a winners. You so you won. So, yes, on, it is. so on the next previous or episode, you yeah. So I will be the producer for the next episode. Do you have your producer name? Uh, uh, I would do anything to get this movie made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, packed nicely. The <laughs> um. <clears throat> No, so yes, I will be the the, Cody, the producer for the I don't next. Like humor, man. Your movie was awesome. All right, Cody, yeah. I liked your movie. That's there's got to be humor. there's got to be two losers in every every group of winners. So uh, this time that was your that was your acceptance <laughs> speech. We'll get the next time, Tyler. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck That's you. right. And on Eat a dick. <laughs> on on and on next time for previously on our topic is going to be music's made into movies.
musics? Yes. So songs or albums or music concepts that you're going to take and turn into a movie. Can we add a caveat no. that Adam can't say anything involving clutch? I mean, I feel like that's the easy route. And that you should be... Uh, okay, here's mine. I'll, t- I'll tell challenging. you mine right now in a couple seconds. It's Muzak the movie, and it's just an elevator, and that's it. I um, mean, you can go with that if you want. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you no. But yeah, so be thinking musically minded. Doesn't matter, I probably won't get picked anyway. you probably pick Adam. <laughs> Alright, I got mine. Oh. No, right. I have a feeling I'm not going to be purposely picked for a while, so... <laughs> that's alright, it's all good. <laughs> Okay, guys, so yeah. think about what songs or albums or musical acts you're going to turn into what a movie. We did, it could be fictional, non-fictional, what biopic, if we did a you coming be of creative. Age, coming of age lesbian story called I Kiss a Girl. You could do that, yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You're taking, a, you're taking a song, you're taking the concept of that song, and then turning it into a movie. Cody, it doesn't matter what you and I pick. It'll probably be Adam anyway. What if well, we, no, because you know why? Because I'm never going to give you up. <laughs> I'm never going to let you down. I'm never going to run around and desert you. He gets mm-hmm. knocked down, but he gets up again. The song of a boxer with Wait. a drinking problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's wetting the bed? Is that why he's pissing the night away? <laughs> From the steroids before he gets clean. Okay, when he stop talking got, about this. Okay. Or he's got like a huge prostate and he can't control them. All All right. <laughs> On that note. Yes, so tune in for next Previously On for Music Into Movies. You've been listening to Previously On, a Damage Control Podcasting production. Find us on YouTube and SoundCloud. Uh, Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share with all of your friends for future updates. And we'll see you next Monday for our next episode. Smash that subscribe button. No, you gotta do. You actually do have a catchphrase. Do I? Yeah, you said it in like the last three. Oh, I just randomly say podcast out when we can't yeah. really get the podcast done. That's that's <laughs> actually been the catchphrase. Okay, podcast then, out. Then you gotta throw the microphone down. And just break. What's it your lit. movie ideas? Text us. Text us. They don't have our numbers. Then you gotta throw the microphone down. And just break. What's it your lit. movie ideas? Text us. Text us.